contend with is that fiscal resources continue to dwindle while the demand for services is rapidly increasing. This reality has been with us for some time now, necessitating national government to implement fiscal consolidation measures to achieve sustainability. Just between 2013 or 14 financial year and 2023-24 financial years, the province lost a cumulative uh, total of 33.925 billion due to fiscal consolidation. In the 2024-25 uh, financial year, transfers from national government amount to 92.8 billion, which is made up of provincial equitable share allocation of 78 billion and conditional grants uh, allocation of 14.7 uh, billion. That means the only uh, funds or allocation we can tamper with as the provinces are 78 billion rand because the 14.7 that is of uh, uh, conditional grants, not, you can't do anything with it. You've got uh, to spend it using um, for what it is intended to and, and sticking to conditions. So you can see that only 78 billion is, is what uh, came our way from the national fiscal fiscals. We are pleased with the increase in conditional grants from the 2023-24 uh, revised estimates of 13.8 billion to 14.87 billion in 24-25. While at, uh, with the major increases seen in the provincial roads grant maintenance grant, national treasury and um, uh, tertiary services grant, health facility uh, rivers, uh, revitalization grant, and lastly the education infrastructure grant. Total payments amount to 95.4 billion and include funding for provincial um, priorities mainly to address education and health budget as well as the economic development intervention for the inclusive economic growth. Now, this results in a deficit of 2.5 billion. And if you, if you consider how much we received that I mentioned earlier from the national revenue and what we intend to spend there's a deficit of 2.5 billion rand. Now, we've got to find that deficit somewhere, and we'll use 1.7 billion rand of, our, of its, uh, the province will have to use 1.7 billion rand of its own receipts, and take 802.1 million rand from its reserve to finance the deficit. And this is, this is not sustainable. We can't continue to dip into our reserves. Actually, our reserves are almost um, uh, depleted. So we can't continue because there will come a time where we will not, when we don't have any uh, of the reserves, the, the province itself will not be sustainable. The, the national government has also pro uh, um, provided a reprieve to provinces by allocating funds for the carry through costs of the public service wage bill, an amount of 2.7 billion rand in 24-25 financial year and 8.7 billion rand over the MTEF has been added to the province, mainly for health and education in that regard. The allocation for the carry through costs was supplemented by an additional 1.5 billion rand in 24-25 financial year and 4.8 billion rand over the MTEF post the, the medium term budget policy statement, owing to the fact that the initial allocation for the cost of living adjustment was uh, insufficient. I did. Uh, um, uh, a brief the House about um, the challenge we had, if you'd remember, with relation to the cost of living adjustment, because as a province we did not budget for that. So once they struck a deal at 7.2, it had to uh, uh, affect us hugely, and we did not have funds for that. But fortunately, the National Treasury decided that they will, they will uh, uh, give us something, particularly for the two departments, a health and education because there was no way that we could have afforded to pay uh, that for health and education. Of, co of course, um, it, it, that was a, a drop in the ocean, but it is, it is much appreciated. Whilst the provincial equitable share has increased by 13.5 billion rand over the 2023 MTF, the actual net increase is 5.3 billion rand, mainly to respond to the compensation of employee pressures emanating from the wage, uh, wage agreement in the education and health, health sectors that I just spoke about. The net increase is a result of 7.9 billion reduction 
uh, that has been implemented by national treasury as part of fiscal consolidation measures at the national level due to fiscal uh, challenges. I did indicate earlier that from 2013 up to now, we, through um, the fiscal consolidation, we've lost about 32.9 billion rand. So this year alone, you can see the net increase uh, is 7.9 um, billion rand. So we continue to lose funds uh, due to uh, fiscal consolidation. Our strategy will therefore align to that of national treasury to continue with the implementation of fiscal consolidation measures in an effort to find balance between revenue and uh, expenditure, and, there, and those include vigorous implementation of the turnaround plans at the departments of health and uh, education, reduction of utilization of, of consultants. I'm sure the member, honorable members will be happy about this. This is a matter that they've been raising, uh, but it's part of the strategy. Accommodating any new policy priorities uh, and spending plans uh, uh, through budget baseline reprioritization, curbing medical legal claims at the Department of Health and legal claims in other departments, including the consequence management on the wrongdoing. You know, there, there is an emphasis and a concentration that uh, the claims only okay in the Department of Health. But I'm, I'm certain that the, the committee, uh, the, 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 the committee at the legislature will agree when they see figures that it's not only the Department of Health uh, where we have claims. We can see cuts across the Department of Education, et cetera, et cetera. Soon it will engulf all departments. Now, as part of our fiscal strategy, the province continues uh, with the uh, implementation of the findings and recommendation of the own revenue research study that was conducted for new sources of revenue as well as efficiencies of the existing uh, revenue sources. These revenue sources will contribute an additional 34.3 million rand in 2024-25, uh, increasing to 50.8 million rand in 2025-26, and 59.5 million rand in 2026-27. <coughs> I must say that, uh, admit upfront that we, we are not performing well when it comes to revenue generation. Um, though we, the, the study indicated that we could get a substantial amount of 7 billion rand, we are far from, from, from raising any revenue closer, uh, closer to that 7 billion rand. So the budget we are tabling today is the key statement of the policy of government to outline the budget priorities and medium-term expenditure framework in, in line with provincial development plan and the medium-term uh, strategic framework. It's anchored on the following policy priorities. Accelerating economic recovery and reconstruction, protecting the social, social wage, strengthening capacity of the state to deliver effectively and efficiently. Now, Madam Speaker, the sixth term of administration saw government embarking on a multi-pronged approach to sustain economic recovery and inspire growth. The approach included mobilization of public and private sector investment, delivery of public infrastructure, and providing support to key sectors of, of the economy and, and, and business. Now, since 2019, uh, this administration has attracted uh, investment flow, inflows totaling 173 billion rand. Now, these investments cover various sectors that are significant to the economy of the province, providing much needed jobs for the people of the Eastern Cape. It's important to highlight that many of these investments are long term and their implementation and returns uh, may be realized in the medium to long term. Madam Speaker, the provincial government continues to leverage on provincial industrial assets and spaces for local industrialization through the investment and trade support on its two special economic zones. The investment that these SEZs have accumulated over the years has uh, host a combined 83 businesses and have 14,000 people uh, in their employ. We're delighted by the pipeline of investment in these SEZs as they have forecast a positive economic trajectory uh, for the province. In the current year, the East London IDZ has reported a 20.3 billion rand uh, pipeline investment value. Uh, there are more than uh, 5.6 5. Um, uh, potential employment opportunities 
expected, expected from these pipeline investments. We want this SEZ to invest in the ICT infrastructure so they remain competitive in the business here in South Africa and abroad. Uh, two of it is London IDZ ICT projects the development of a data center and a manufacturing incubator are nearing a completion and uh, Honorable Premier, the CEO of the IDZ uh, yesterday informed me that we have received all the funds uh, pertaining to the, uh, the, 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 the development of the, of the data center, which was which is one of the projects uh, for, for ICT. Uh, and thanks to the intervention also of the Premier to sp speaking to the Minister to ensure that we receive that. We appreciate the support given to these SSS by the Department of Trade and Industry, Trade, Industry and Competition. Since 2019-20, uh, DTIC has transferred a total of 298.8 million rand for top structure to settle or expand operations for several investor, investor companies in the East London IDZ. The provincial government was able to reinforce with a total of 538.6 million rand between 2020-21 and 2023-24 financial years to cover operational costs at, at the zone. For the 2024 MTF, a total of 294.2 million rand will be allocated to the Island and IDZ to fund their operational activities for investment attraction into the province. We're excited. Uh, by the 3 billion rand in, in investment by Strandis Group to build a state-of-the-art car manufacturing plant at Kuha. This uh, investment will bring a lot of uh, uh, jobs and uh, uh, business and, and job uh, opportunities. The, five, uh, the plus minus 5 billion rand uh, dollars uh, green ammonia project in the Kuha SZ is another source of joy for the province. Was is expected uh, to produce um, an anticipated 950,000 tons of green hydrogen and ammonia per annum on fully operation by the end of uh, 2028. So for the Stirandis Group Investment Project, DTIC committed 950 million rand for 2023-24 and 2024-25 financial years for the construction of top structures. The provincial uh, government is also setting aside a total of 65 million rand of the over the 2024 MTF uh, uh, period to cover operational costs uh, at the SEZ. Efforts to establish the Wild Coast SEZ in Tata are gaining traction. It's com is currently operating as a, an industrial park. We await feedback from the minister on our application for SEZ uh, designation uh, of the zone following the investment pipeline of uh, 1.7 billion rand that has been secured, we are resolute in establishing uh, uh, that uh, SEZ. Meanwhile, a service provider has been appointed to install the bulk infrastructure. We are allocating 21 million rand for 24-25 uh, financial year and 55.9 million rand over the MTF to, to CDC, Kuka Development Corporation, for operationalization of the Wild Coast uh, Industrial Park. Uh, with the auto industry, the relationship between the, uh, the, the auto sector and Eastern Cape government has strengthened during the sixth uh, administration, with Eastern Cape Auto Industry Development uh, Center, Eastern Cape, at the center of it. And it's true that strong bond that we have witnessed the growth of the industry in the Eastern Cape, uh, notwithstanding many challenges that the industry has experienced and continues to experience. To date, the industry employs about 55,000 people and hosts about 118 world-class component suppliers with a combined investment revenue of 22 billion rand into our economy by um, Mercedes-Benz, uh, South Africa, Volkswagen, Isuzu, and Ford in the last five years. We're delighted to note uh, that the operationalization of 11.2 billion rand by Bike SA and IDC has started. We visited Bike uh, last week with the Premier um, to see uh, Honorable Stevenson that it is operating. To date, um, IDC has invested 1.2 billion rand with Bike SA, um, investing 2.7 billion rand in, in, in phase uh, one of the project. Now, the Stellantis Group is the latest to join our shores with an investment of 3 billion rand, a fit that solidifies the Eastern Cape as the hub of the economic. Um, automotive sector. 
our province is ready to attract more investors, uh, in investments from this industry with uh, the intention of creating more jobs. We are therefore mandating the AIDC Eastern Cape to work closely with Kuha Development Corporation, East London uh, IDZ, and the Eastern Cape Development Corporation to attract new original equipment manufacturers into our province going to the future, uh, especially uh, those um, OEMs that are producing um, e electric vehicles. Honorable Speaker, there is no denying of the Eastern Cape's potential to being the food basket of the country due to our comparative advantage in agriculture. The, pro the province has, uh, accounts for a significant share of the country's livestock, milk, wool, mohair, and hort uh, horticultural production. We want to build from the efforts we have made at a policy implementation level to realize this potential. Over the sixth administration, the government invested an amount of 11.5 billion rand, mainly to fund the agricultural producer support, veterinary services, and agricultural education and training programs. The sector a commitment to these important initiatives has helped to drive sustainable growth and development in the agricultural industry, ultimately benefiting both farmers and, con and consumers. The introduction of the Agriculture and Agro-Processing Master Plan by government, which promotes the inclusive growth, inclusive growth, competitiveness, transformation, employment and food security will enhance the strides and commitment of government in supporting the agricultural sector in the province. The plan is linked to the agriculture and economic transformation strategy that Dr. Dad developed in and implemented in 2017-18, which is aimed at uh, commercializing uh, uh, smallholder farmers. So we are investing 7.7 billion rand over the 2024 medium term expenditure framework to Dr. Da, of which 2.4 billion rand has been allocated for 24-25 financial year to support initiatives con contained in the Agriculture and Agro Processing Master Plan. Mm -hmm. Included in the 2024 MTF allocation is funding for substitution of agricultural commodities such as soybeans canola, sunflower, and poultry to drive inclusive and sustainable agricultural development in the Eastern Cape. Uh, furthermore, provincial co uh, government is currently finalizing a model for the procurement of agricultural food products targeting school nutrition, patient food, and, and food parcels program. Now, the model also aims to systematically integrate small-scale farmers and aggregators into agricultural value chains to mainstream government procurement. This model has the potential to open up additional market opportunities for many smallholder farmers and agro-processors within the Eastern Cape province, enabling enterprise development and fostering rural development. Actually, this model talks to why should we have these uh, smallholder farmers producing um, you know, um, uh, veggies, let me just make it as several veggies in the province, and you have a school nutrition program, and you have hospitals, and you still procure all of that outside of the province. This is what the model seeks to do. Um, Madam uh, Speaker, the provincial economic development strategy that is under review is considering um, including the freedom and creatives industry as one of the key sectors uh, of the Eastern Cape economy. Now, this is due to the rapid emergence and of the sector in supporting economic growth and, and job creation in the province. The 39 million rand worth of financial support that government injected to the industry in the current term of administration through the Freedom Investment Fund has positioned us as the, as the Eastern Cape province as a preferred destination for hosting local, national, and international film uh, production. For 2024, 25, and 25, 26 financial years, the provincial government is allocating 24 million rand to ECDC to fund, support, and revitalize uh, the, the film uh, industry. We are intentional, very intentional in these effort, efforts because we want to see local talent, young people who have passion and love, and love for film growing to become film ambassadors in the Eastern Cape and beyond. Just Friday, I was in Nelson Mandela, Kabeha, where ECDC was signing an agreement with uh, the Nelson Mandela Bay Development Agency, um, uh, and we, in that they have pumped in five million rand. 
and the same would be done with the um, uh, BCMDA, Buffalo City uh, uh, Development Agency, uh, uh, the same amount of 5 million rand. Uh, that, that is a partnership we want to have with both of them in ensuring that this, uh, uh, this industry uh, uh, grows in, in our province. It is worth, um, the Speaker, the micro, small, and medium enterprise sector remains a crucial player in the development of our economy and employment creation. At a time when the economy is not performing at the level that we all desire, it's important that government intervenes to keep small businesses afloat so they can continue to play their role. It's worth highlighting that 56% of the province's goods and services budget went to the Eastern Cape MSMEs in the last five years. Uh, and this is part of our uh, policy, uh, early DPF, where we, 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 we say uh, the government departments should procure most of, what their, of, of their goods and services from within the province. The provincial departments uh, spent a total of 76.7 billion on goods and services, with 46.8 billion spent on the it's in Cape uh, based suppliers. Of the 46.8 uh, billion rand, 38.8 billion rand was uh, spent on MSMEs, with Eastern Cape MSMEs benefiting to the tune of over 21.7 billion rand. A government's broad uh, policy framework for the sector includes uh, formulating and rolling out legislative and policy reforms for the sector, institutionalizing one-stop shops to ease the regulatory burden on MSMEs, providing loans and, and blended finance, a business infrastructure support, and facilitating uh, market access to products, um, certification, testing, and quality um, assurance. You will recall, uh, Honorable Speaker, that provincial government uh, allocated 100 million rand to the uh, Economic Development Fund at ECDC during the 22-23 financial year. Uh, we've been told that thus far, um, 81 million rand of the 100 million rand has been allocated uh, to six approved programs, with the balance being rolled over to the 24-25 uh, 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 fiscal period. Now. The six, uh, uh, six approved programs, they cut across sectors that are seen as key to provinces' rapid industrialization, job creation, and poverty alleviation agenda. And the fund has been able to leverage external funding participation in the six uh, funded programs from the private sector to the value of 78 million. This is one of the condition we, conditions we gave to them to say, we're giving you 100 million. We're not expecting you, you're not going to make an impact or a dent if you think you're going to go along with this 100 million. You need to partner with the private sector. Even uh, if you can, you must go into situations where you partner rent for rent. And if you do that, you will be able to to make an impact with the 100 million rand uh, we gave you. So they're reporting now uh, having leveraged 78 million rand through uh, what they have already um, uh, 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 dispersed. And for the 24 25 financial year, we've decided to top it up well, by 30 million rand for the continuation of the fund with eight more programs expected to be supported. I actually spoke to the HOD and I said the HOD must go there to ECTC and look at. The, uh, the 81 million rand that has been dispersed. Must be able to look at plans and say, we have given AIDC 15 million rand. The, I said to the issue, to go there and say, produce the business plan of that 15 million rand. So we don't just, uh, you know, um, um, uh, uh, give, give out funds to even people that are not in need of funds. It must be supported by a business plan. But also, we must look at what uh, um, ECTC does not open, it, 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 it does not share the money. I, I remember the story of the 1.1 billion rand, if you remember, of the stimulus fund. How the billion rand. This is the second biggest slice of the cake. Goes to the department, goes to the department of health. There have been notable improvements in their grant allocations. As I indicated earlier, the National Tertiary Services Grant increased um, 
by an amount of 100.7.7 million in 24-25 from an amount of 1.1 billion to 1.2 billion as well as the health facility revitalization grant, etc., etc. Final adjustment with the department's baseline include an additional amount of 598 million rand in 24-25 and 1.8 billion rand over the 2024 MTF for wage agreement. I must highlight that provincial government continues to roll out its health turnaround plan that seeks to promote financial sustainability within health. The plan is work in progress and is targeting to reduce medical legal payouts, introduce health services uh, optimization, digitalization of health services through e-health and strengthening of primary health and community health programs. I think if we could, uh, through you, uh, Honorable Speaker, MSMS deal with digitalization in, in the Department of Health, many of our challenges will be gone. I, I even said that when I was speaking to uh, uh, the, the, the Treasury Department in our own discussion on this budget. I was asking them the question, when are we finalizing this project? We can't continue to pilot and pilot. Because one of the reasons we have a challenge in medical legal is because we're still working on paper. That's why if there's going to be a claim, you know when someone comes and inquire about a, pa a patient, and in hospital, you can't find the file. You know exactly what's going to happen next. There's going to be a medical, uh, there's going to be a claim. So we've got to work on that digitalization. So we invested 10.9 billion rand to social development between 2020 and 2021, sorry, 2020, 2021, and 2023-24 to transform our society by building conscious and capable citizens through the provision of integrated uh, development, so, uh, developmental social services with families at the core of social change. To continue with these services, we are allocating 9.2 billion rand to social uh, development over the MTF with 2.9 billion rand of that amount allocated in 2024-25. Uh, this morning, I spoke to the MEC for social development, Majek. And the MEC says uh, she wants more money for social workers. So when you do your adjustment uh, uh, in, uh, in November, you must, you must think of, of, of that, uh, that uh, the MEC spoke to me for that. On the Department of Human Settlements, um, we invested 9 billion rand between 2020 and 21 and 2023 and 24. So we are allocating 2.3 billion rand in 2024-25 and 6.9 billion rand over the MTF. An amount of 1.5 billion rand is set aside for Human Settlements Development Grant, while 361.4 million rand is for the Informal Settlement Upgrading uh, Partnership Grant. So we're expecting the MUC to go into these informal settlements and make it and make a difference with that. With that, now this work has been allocated 3.2 billion rand on over the MTF, and the uh, community SAP has been allocated 433.9 million over the MTF to respond to crime and gender-based violence and femicide in the province. I know. When it comes to community safety, people want to think of community safety as that department uh, that should be getting almost equal to honorable guard because of the police. It's a, it's, a, it's a service that cuts across. Unfortunately, it, is, it rests with the national uh, uh, department. In the department of COCTA, uh, we are allocating 3.4 billion rand over the MTF to provide support to municipalities, kingdoms, and traditional councils. We've also allocated an amount of 705.4 million rand in 2024-25 and 2 billion rand over the uh, MTF to uh, provincial legislature to perform their oversight function on the work that is done by provincial government. I, I know that uh, Honorable um, uh, the chair, uh, uh, not of the cock, not uh, not of Cocta, Honourable Ndabin, don't you unborn one thing at the end? Honourable Ndabin uh, made a, commi a commitment that uh, he will not leave this legislature uh, before uh, they get a particular slice. I, I don't even want to mention that slice. 
uh, from National Treasure. <laughs> you know, Honorable Kasim, that's why. So we hope we're getting there, and we, we're doing all, all the best to ensure that you are able to, to perform your duty. The, the office of the Premier has been allocated uh, 1 billion rand, uh, over 1 billion rand in 24-25, and 3.3 .3 billion rand over the MDF to fund, amongst others, integrated youth development, provincial ICT programs. Uh, the monitoring and valuation program and human resource management. We've allocated an amount of 478.2 million rand uh, in 2024 25 and 1.5 billion rand over the MTF to provincial treasury to continue to support uh, provincial departments and municipalities to ensure sound financial and resource um, management. The Department of Public Works and Infrastructure has been allocated 2.6 billion rand in 2024 25 financially and 7.9 billion rand over the 2024 MTF, mainly to improve the infrastructure delivery capacity of provincial government. I know the okay, MEC comes to me and says, Nitima Sense, Ipisho Precinct. Ipisho Precinct is going to cost us 2 billion rand. Now, Kibanis Nike budgeted 2.6 billion rand. Sisheke Lui, 600 million rand, Sazagon Zandul. And my response is very simple. There is no way you are going to spend 2 billion, 2.6, 2, 2. I mean, 2 billion rand on the bishop precincts within one year. There is no way you can do that. You've got to phase it out. And as you phase it out, you must budget accordingly. Otherwise, like 2 billion rand, also Sheke like 600 million rand, you still have 2.6 billion rand. But if you want, if you want further, further explanation, your HOD must speak, must speak to my, to my, to my HOD uh, with, re, with regards to that. Um, for the province, the under expenditure on conditional grants has decreased from 641 million rand in 2019-20 to 309 million rand in 2022-23 uh, financial year. Also, funds that the province lost to the National Revenue Fund on conditional grants decreased from 119.5 million rand in 2019-20 to 62.7 million rand in 2022 financial year. So at least we can see there's an improvement. Uh, or, um, we are starting to spend our funds. And uh, when Honorable Williams tells us about um, MIG, for the first time in this uh, December, where municipalities should have spent about 40 million, 40 percent of their of their allocation. For the first time, the Eastern Cape did not lose any funds in December. <laughs> All municipalities spent to the expected level, and that was done because of the introduction of the risk uh, adjust adjustment strategy. Uh, we said, going to the MEC, that must roll out to other grants. Uh, so that we, we are able to uh, keep what is allocated to us, spend it in the Eastern Cape, and not, and not lose. We can't, we can't afford to lose. For municipalities, we had uh, lost 3.3 uh, billion rent to the National Revenue Fund between 2019 and 2023 through rollover and stopping processes. We attributed that to external factors such as COVID-19, etc., etc. However, an amount of 1.6 billion rand was relocated back to the province in municipalities that are performing better. At least there's something good in municipalities that um, those that are spending get to benefit from those that are not spending. And we've also been successful in persuading the national government to say, if we as Eastern Cape have not spent 3.3 billion rand, please don't reallocate that money to other provinces, reallocate it to us as the province, and that battle we have won. <laughs> so we equally encourage municipalities that are affected by national disasters to improve spending on disaster funds. Government has set aside a total of an amount of 944 since 2021-22 to fix municipal infrastructure affected by, by disasters. Of that amount, 658 million was allocated in 2023-24 to recover municipal infrastructure that was affected by the disasters. Speaker, there are seven municipalities that have been sub, uh, supported to apply to, part, to participate in the municipal debt relief program coordinated by National Treasury have all been approved. 
the municipalities were, su were supported due to huge ESCOM uh, RDF totaling to 2.9 billion rand as at 31st of March 2023. The supported municipalities are Makana, Dr. Peyas Mwadiye, Amashati, Renu Mshaba, Walter Sisulu, Ino Mkijima, and Ino Tempo. So we, we supported their application, uh, Honorable uh, Williams, on the proviso that they stick to the conditions. I know that there is, a, there is an appetite uh, for them not to stick to those conditions and still benefit. No, it can, you, cannot, you cannot benefit in, in both ways. It's, your own, it's their own creation that they are found in this mess. And uh, this is something that is trying to rescue them. Then therefore the conditions that they must pay uh, their current um, uh, account uh, going forward and not skip any, is a condition. We're giving you money, scrapping your, your, what you are owing to ESCOM. Now you must keep to that condition, uh, the condition of service. We're not changing. I know that uh, uh, you are also, the, 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 the Department of Cocta is, seems not to be supporting this, and hopefully you are supporting it. The payment arrangement is over a period of three years, uh, subject to meeting the conditions set out in MFMA Circular 124. The write off a third of the total debt each year over a period of three years. The provincial treasurer and COCTA must work together to monitor compliance with the conditions as set out. Now, the words of British broadcaster and former politician Nigel Farage explain our situation better. Honorable, uh, he says, I open quote, we shouldn't measure everything in terms of GDP figures or economics. There is something called quality of life, close quote. The quality of life of people of South Africa in the Eastern Cape has improved, as proven by Stats SA of Census 2022. <laughs> the seventh administration awaits us. We amassed enough evidence to prove our ability and capability to change the lives of the people of the SNK. Let us work together towards consolidating the gains that we have achieved during this term to build the Eastern Cape we want. There is no new money, and therefore, we must show continuity on the good things we have been doing and exercise financial prudence. If we unite in support of the fundamentals of this budget, we are destined to deliver to the next administration an Eastern Cape that has a strong economy, stable public finances, and protected uh, social wage. As some of you, a little look, the Bella said, "Tagana olu shashulabu emali kwezi skaba standardu sohulumen." And Oscar Mabuyan. And the Kwakunye <laughs> Naba sebenz bonge be sebe. Kom sebenz om share ba te polo guenza. Tiswele milomo eluak. Ubandu bel pondo. Aba kasi. Kwa kunye na abo se sebenza na mugulenjela. Ngwasi mugus nyamezela na mugus sebenza na nati. Inde lenjela. Ifuna mo mele. Tifuna nje uguti. Siabuya. Ngwasi mkana kanda.
thank you, honourable members. You can calm down now. Seeming everybody is excited about the figures, honourable uh, MEC. Honourable members, at this point, uh, the bill will stand referred to the Standing Committee on Budget and Money Bills in terms of Rule 161. I will just ask the Secretary to make an announcement. Honourable members and guests, we are all invited to a finger lunch courtesy of Provincial Treasury. It will be served at the Mama Albertina Sisulu Members Lobby and also at the Mama Nokani Thomas Dining Hall as well as at the Baba Mandla Makupula Garden of Remembrance at the back. Thank you. Thank you, honourable members. Uh, this concludes the business of the day. Yes, we are formally adjourning the house.